Welcome back. Every week we interview a big name in the news in the Weekly Insider, and this week it's Jordan Peterson. The Canadian psychology professor is somebody people love or love to hate. Peterson gained national notoriety in the fall of 2016 when he spoke out about a federal bill on gender expression and a U of T policy to call students by their gender pronoun of choice. Peterson says there shouldn't be laws forcing people to use specific language. I can envision a student or a colleague insisting that I call, call them using gender neutral pronouns, G or jure, I think it is. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Peterson called it freedom of speech. Critics called it transphobia, and protests ensued. But then on YouTube, he's a star. His lecture topics range from personality to advice for young men. And the videos have scored more than 36 million views. He's huge on Twitter with 365,000 followers. And on the crowdfunding site Patreon, he hauls in $65,000 a month. Could be as much as three quarters of a million dollars annually. Joining me is U of T professor Jordan Peterson. He's got a new book out called 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos. So, Professor Peterson, you must be exhausted. You've been giving all these speeches and sold out performances, and it's quite something. Are you? It's crazy. How do you explain what's going on? You're you're now called Canada's most powerful intellectual. <laughs> How do I explain it? Yeah, what's behind this? What are the forces that have made you so popular? I tell archetypal stories. I think that's it. I mean, I, the sorts of things that I've been talking to people about our old things and they're the things that people always need to know. And Your message has so, really seem, seemingly resonated with young men. Why, why is that? Well, because young men have been fed a diet of, on the one hand, let's say rights and impulsive freedom for 50 years, but rights aren't as useful with regards to establishing what's meaningful in your life as a responsibility. And so, because most of the things that people find deeply meaningful in their lives have to do with responsibility. You know, your responsibility of your career, your resp the responsibility of your education, responsibility that you take on for your family and for your broader community. The world is so polarized now. You've got mm -hmm. Donald Trump and social media and people screaming at each other on all kinds of different political issues. Are you part of that polarization? It's a good question. I don't think so. Um, the reason I don't think so is because I've had hundreds of letters from people now, maybe even thousands of letters from people who've told me that they had become increasingly attracted, for example, by the blandishments of the radical right. But because they'd been listening to what I was saying online, they decided that that was a very bad idea. And I don't like right-wing identitarians. I think they play the same game as the radical leftists, which is identity politics. They just play a different version of it. But I'm no fan of the radical right. I've been lecturing about the dangers of Nazi totalitarianism, for example, for almost three decades. It's been a major part of my life's work to inoculate people against that, the attraction of that sort of thing. After your speaking out against the, uh, the federal bill, C-16, yep. and gender pronouns and so on, uh, the federal government cut your funding for research. Uh, Rebel Media came in and did a crowdfunding mm -hmm. uh, project for you, raised about $200,000. Mm -hmm. um, after Charlottesville uh, and the riots, the protests there, uh, many people cut ties with rebel media, including the conservative leader, Andrew Scheer, saying mm -hmm. that it could be seen as giving hate groups a platform. Um, you still go on there. So I'm wondering, why do you go on rebel media after, after Charlottesville? I mean, you don't think we should talk to people on the right? So that's why? I talk to people who want to talk to me, generally speaking. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be careful about it, but I don't see any reason not to talk to people who are on the right. I talk to people who are on the left when they want to talk, which is very, very rarely. I've read a lot of what you've posted in the last year or so. In fact, you're very careful about saying, please so the, so, be less well, radical. So then there's a real question there, is given that you've, that you've, uh, you know, you've encountered the material I have, why do you think that all this, all these accusations have been leveled at me? Well, I don't know. That's, that's what I find so curious. It's I, convenient. Because I also found this <clears throat> picture of you with behind the pet that is that you i mean it's you but i mean that's an actual <laughs> yeah, that's photo of you you me. did that yeah so yeah. this is the this is the pepe flag mm -hmm. 
which I'm sure you know is seen by the left as a hate symbol. And, yeah, and, well, the, see, the left sees it, all sorts of things as hate symbols. But it's used by the extreme right as a, a way of spreading messages. It's been it's seen as an alt-right symbol. It's this mostly, is, it's this is an alt-right hand symbol, <laughs> and here you are. Look, it's mostly used by young men who are poking and causing trouble on social media. That's mostly what it's used for. But you're supposed to be mostly... anti-chaos and anti-provocation. I'm just wondering why you would choose to be in this photo. Well, I've probably had my photo taken with five or 6,000 people in the last year. No, but year, this is so... with a Pepe flag. I understand that. I mean, that. you know yeah. that, that this is now seen as a, as a symbol for the old. The well, old I did a video online called The Metaphysics of Pepe with Jonathan Paggio, who's an orthodox carver of icons. And if you... If people are interested in my views on what's happening with this particular symbol and why it's occurring, then there's a two-hour discussion about that. Richard Spencer wears a pep... He's a white supremacist. He wears the Pepe symbol. It's become adopted, I'm sure you know this, by, by the far right. And here you are holding up a flag like it's, it's a joke. So I just wonder if, if it could be misinterpreted by people that you're trying to send a message that Pepe's cool well, I and think the alt has cool. Been, I think it has been misinterpreted. I didn't know when it was happening. I mean... It's hard, I don't know what you mean exactly. There were a lot of people lined up. They were doing a lot of things. This was one of the things. It took about 30 seconds. Um, I would also say it's the one thing, well, it's the one thing that, that, that has been photographed that the left in particular has been used, using against me for the last year. But it was just happenstance more than anything else. Do you know most guy... of the people who are using this sort of symbol are using it in a deeply satirical way. Now, the fact that the far right has decided that um, it's, it's, it's a, what, a radical indicator of, of the validity of their particular view doesn't mean that that's what it is. So it's something that we haven't seen before. There's a it's lot of we, game playing going yeah, on there online. Is a, there is a, a lot, lot of game playing, and there's a yeah. lot of sort of codes and dog whistles and there so on is. on all sides being sent. Here's another one. This is, uh, this is a tweet that you sent out, Keck Boys, which is kind of like mm. another... Pepe, mm -hmm. uh, it's something that's been adopted by the extreme right, Code Pepe. So yep. you are, you're using this to reach these people. Yeah, well, are, I can tell you about that. Yeah, well, because you want, this, sure. this is your course, right? So you want yeah, them it's a to, program. I to want take them, your course. I want them to plan their futures as responsible individuals. What does it say? Keck boys, trapped in chaos, seek your fortune, right? Don't stay in the underworld. That's why I'm talking to them. I'm trying to call them forth as individuals out of the chaos that they're ensconced in. So that's you're what helping that's them, for. But they're helping you too. You raise a lot of money. Well, what do you think what do you think should happen in this polarized world if you're dealing with people that you think are being attracted by a pathological ideology? What do you think you should do with them? What I do is talk to them and say, look, why don't you make yourself into an individual and get the hell away from the ideology? And so a lot of these kids are lost in the underworld, let's say in nihilism, and they turn to these ideological solutions because they don't know what else to do, and they're angry. It's like, I have something better for them to do. Grow the hell up and sort yourself out as an individual. And so that's, and that's exactly why I made this particular tweet. And so, and I get letters from people all the time who say, look, you know, I was moving towards the fringes, and I'm not doing that anymore. I see why it's wrong. So you're, you've become this huge sensation. What's next for you? Like, I'm trying to figure your, figure out, are you, are you the next Marshall McLuhan? Are you the next Billy Graham? Like, are, are you a, a prof? Or are you Billy a... McLuhan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's next, really. So you're a prof, prophet? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we're in, a, we're in a new world in many ways because of the reach of social media. And so I have this immense multimedia platform and I don't know exactly what to do with it. I mean, what I'm doing right now with it is making videos that I think are useful to people, interviewing people that I think are interesting to talk to, but I'm sort of shaping this as it's developing because there's no way of predicting it. And the, the, the overwhelming likelihood, as far as I'm concerned, and it's been this way ever since September of 2016, is that this will go terribly wrong. That's the most likely outcome. I've known that ever since I made those what videos. What do you mean by that? How would it go wrong? Oh, well, things go wrong all the time. You know, I no, say something... No, but what are you afraid of? Saying something inappropriate. Well, you've said lots of things that have made people angry. That's not the same thing. So wh why would you say something inappropriate? Because people make mistakes. Mm. 
And so, like, I've been in a situation, I would say, for 15 months, really, where I'm speaking publicly and, and I've been in front of the news media a lot. And people are waiting. Well, they're waiting with things like this to say, look, well, you made a mistake here. It's like, yeah, well, I've done like 10,000 things in the last year and maybe I made a mistake. Did you? Hard to say. I mean, I don't think the, I don't think that I, uh, the discussion I had about Pepe, I don't regret that at all. When I put up on YouTube, that's the serious discussion. I think I understand what's going on with the Keck boys and with Pepe a hell of a lot better than the people do who are, you know, casual observers of it because I've actually studied it. And so, no, I don't think I made a mistake. I think it's, uh, no, I don't think I made a mistake, hmm. no. So, and I think that that's the case mostly, as I said, because of all the feedback I'm getting from people who say, look, uh, you straighten out my life. And so that's good enough. And I'm hoping that will continue. I think it's unlikely that it will continue in a positive direction, but you never know. It's too much, eh? That's the thing. It's been too much for a long time, but so far so good. And I'll write it out as well as I can. But I'm surfing a hundred foot wave. And generally what happens if you do that is that you drown. That's interesting. It's been great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Nice to talk to you as well.